the studio right now. Guys, how are we? Hello. Very good, thank you. Yeah. You, did, you released, like say, a digital download for free. Was it important to release it as a, as a free download, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, we wanted to get as many email addresses off people as possible so we could <laughs> bombard them and spam them with uh, future releases. Um, and that, yeah, that's all we did, you know, we kind of... It was a, a bit of a trade-off. We give a free track away and people kind of sign up to our mailing list and, and then we could keep them informed. But um, also it was important, I think, to give people um, a chance to, to kind of get back into the band and have a taste of something for nothing, you know, without putting the hand in the pocket and, you know, get a, a flavour for the album. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, so with the album, you started working on it as soon as you finished the, the previous tour. How did that affect the actual music? Did, were, were you fresh going into it? Well, when we finished, like, the Upgarden and Atom campaign, um, we'd actually toured the UK like two or three times, we toured Europe a couple of times as well, uh, well, maybe a little bit more. And so by the time we come off them, we were a bit torn out, I guess. Um, so we just went straight in the rehearsal room, got our own rehearsal space, went straight in and, and just started working on them, which we sort of took us time, you know, we didn't force ourselves to write songs and we, we spent a bit of time doing it and we wrote quite a lot of songs and we dismissed a lot, you know, that wouldn't make the cut for the record. So we sort of went in and it, like that advantage of taking our time, so that meant we were fresh and like, you know, we weren't forcing like, the process and it, I think that worked out best for us. In, in, in the video, um, it's, it's a, a fair hilarious take on a video with Alex Carter um, from Emmerdale in Hollywood, obviously. You've got mates with him, he's perfect for the role. Um, how did you come about that he, he actually took part in the video? It's nice that Alex is in the video, um, so he's a bit of a, bit of a well-known face. And yeah, he's just good friends with us. He, he's he's set up base in in Leeds, and we we see him hanging about Edinburgh. But we try not to talk about the animal videos as much as possible, because from a band point of view, it's it's a little bit of a clangor. We we kind of hate it. And that's, <laughs> that's that's me being polite because we're on the radio. Um, yeah, it was one of those videos where kind of everybody was having an outside influence of oh, you need to do this, you should do this. This would be a great idea, and um, it, the, the war is down a bit, and we just let them get away with what they thought would be a good idea. And um, it was a it was a, a mistake we've learned from. We won't be doing it again. <laughs> that's fair enough. Then. But with, with the single itself, you're going for the the FA Cup anthem. Yeah. Um, that's obviously exciting in itself. But you've also played played the song live in a gig. Yeah. At a stadium, is that well, playing in a band and playing in a stadium? That's like everybody's dream, basically. So how do you actually feel doing that? It, it was pretty cool. I mean, it was sort of a weird one though. You know, like just sort of ten minutes before the kick off and quickly ran on, set up, and by, well, already set up, sorry, but, you know, played the song. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd love to play a stadium properly, you know, like <laughs> yeah. a huge stage, and like, like the, you know, 80,000 at Wembley or whatever. But um, it was a really good experience. It's something we've never done before, and we had a really good day, and um, like I say, you can vote for us, and um, vote, vote for Animal to, to be the FA Cup anthem, so it'll, it'll be the anthem for next season. Um, and then we also make an appearance and a performance at half-time on, at Wembley, if we if we won, that is the winner does that, um, and I think the the most football terrorist sort of people would quite like um, Animal for for that type of song as opposed to maybe with one or two other type genres of music. So um, you know, you can still convert for us on the FA website to do it. Yeah, you've got to what about midnight tonight? I think it's tonight, yeah. yeah so getting quick. <laughs> how would you like, if you actually won? How would it feel being part of FA Cup history? I think. It's something we never really thought about. You know, it's it's kind of a such a left field thing for a band to get the opportunity to do. We've never we never kind of had a master plan to 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 pen the anthem for the FA Cup. So I think we'll have to take it with a pinch of salt to a certain extent. But um, like you say, it's history. So um, it'd be quite quite an honour to be involved in something. It's one of those things as well where once once you've done it and you've got it, you know, no one can take it away from you. In 20 years' time, you can say. Remember, we were the theme tune for the FA Cup, and you 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 grow up watching the FA Cup final, don't you? It's one of those games where it doesn't matter if Stoke are playing Port Vale, and it's going to be a crap match. You'll still tune in because <laughs> it's the FA Cup final. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. There's loads of heritage there, loads of history, and uh, I'd be proud to to put the Pigeon Detectives name to it. Yeah, you've also got the the enemy in the campaign. You, you, sure, there's a bit been a bit of banter between them for the campaign itself. They're quite a humble bunch of lads, the enemy, actually. Yeah, I've the seen sound. Their, yeah, the, the, the tweets have been very much like, you know, we're in great company in this competition, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, yeah, we know them quite well, and we, we actually haven't spoke to them, because they got added quite late to the sort of competition. Um, 
we've not really seen them um, or like you know since they got added to it but we're, we're invited to the final regardless of whether we win or not so I assume the enemy are and we'll you know catch up with them then and you know they're a good band so it's been like, pretty brave on their part to start mouthing off to Pigeon Detectives though because there's five of us three of them <laughs> yeah. and, uh, the, sandwich, the average say, height yeah. of our band is six foot three <laughs> yeah. and I don't think they're the tallest bunch of people in the world <laughs> So it's, it's, it's a win-win situation for you guys, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're fairly <laughs> confident. <laughs> uh, so with the album itself, the new single, um, I Won't Come Back, is already, it's a quality single. Have you been getting much feedback for it already? We have actually, as um, it's like the, the last video, Animal, which we weren't that keen on, um, we, we, um, we actually took a bit of a stance for the I Won't Come Back video. Um, so we um, basically, Matt got quite involved with a, a local sort of filmmaking company in, in Leeds and um Why, where, where were you right while I was sorting out this music video of ours what, what, what were you up to? I was on a beach in, um, <laughs> in the Canary Islands. <laughs> where, where was Jimmy by any chance? Was he around? Jimmy, where were he? He was, was somewhere. He was in Poingarole. Yeah, he was in Spain so Everybody went on holiday and just left so we left, we left Matt deal with it. But Matt did a good job um, like you, collaborating right. with his people and basically, you know, the video went up and the, the hits flew up, you know. Considering Animal was our first track, um, the, the video had around about 900,000 hits and I think I will come back to nearly 200,000 or something at the moment. So, you know, it's a testament to the good video, and, but also the song. And um, I think it's all about the guitar solo in that song. Yeah. Now it doesn't play guitar. Yeah, it's She's got one of those solos, <laughs> you, kind of, you want to listen to it again and again. And recording the song, I must have heard it about 300 times and that's honestly not an exaggeration. Um, it's been a couple of years since the, since the last album release and a lot's changed over a couple of years in the whole industry and everything so um, you know we've done fairly well on pre-orders a lot of people have heard Animal I Won't Come Back and I think you know think you know they're looking forward to the album so pre-orders did well and did very well in fact and um, you know we they just got delivered on Saturday as well yeah they got delivered early everybody's been treating <coughs> everybody's us everybody's going to get the album through. Monday and they've all landed on people's doorsteps yeah. on Saturday Technically, it's already out there. Yeah, yeah. Which, um, <laughs> takes a bit of a shine off tomorrow, but never mind. <laughs> but a lot of the, the, you know, we've got some really like nice tweets and like Facebook messages saying how great the album is. So, um, you know, that's that's really good for us. We're really happy with that, and um, obviously we want people to go out and buy it tomorrow. And if they like it, let us know. Really. Well, you're headlining Sugar Mill tonight. How good is it to be back in Stoke? You've had some memorable gigs in Stoke already. Stoke's always a, a safe bet for us. We kind of liaise some booking agents and things like that on where we should tour and where we should go. We always kind of throw Stoke into the into the mix. Um, cause it always does well. We always have a decent crowd. It always sells out. Um, and the crowd seems to just keep getting younger. The, the, you know, the kids are mad for it. We played there last year, and I remember we had to stop halfway through because the the barrier kind of was was lifted five inches off the ground, but subsequently moved five feet forward. So it's um, it's always pretty chaotic. Be a good show tonight. Yeah, you have mentioned that in a previous interview, like yeah, being excited to come and play here. Um, is is it that for that reason? Because the fans are so up for it. Yeah, it's a good venue as well. You know, it's a really it lends itself to that kind of old school rock and roll environment. You know, you can smell the audience as well as see them and <laughs> kind of sweat dripping off the walls. So so. Taste them. Yeah, exactly. And you know, we, we play similar capacity yeah. venues throughout the country that just don't seem to kind of create that 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 same furious atmosphere um, so like the shape of the room helps the size of the stage it's just a really really good gig dressing room is a bit of a dump but <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Uh, we're going to play the, the track I won't come back in a little while but um, I've got one question I've got to ask you from Joe Tomasso who's a local, a local musician he wants to know if you how many mics you broke when you've been swinging them around on set um, do you know I've, I've lost count I used to buy my own microphones, or we used to buy them as a band, we used to use SM58s, I think they're about 80 quid a pop, and um, I was going through one every three days, um, and we used to try and sell them on the merch stand, I'd sign them and then we'd sell them to some, <laughs> I want to say fan, but I'm going to say mug, um, <laughs> that I'd buy them for like 20 quid and that I'd go towards kind of buying new ones, um, but we've recently got an endorsement with the uh, Audio Technic, um, nice and they just send us them for, if not free, next to nothing, but... Um, who we've gone through? The end of it all. There's enough. always a box full of broken mics that get sent back to Audio Technic and they repair them and send them back. So it's uh, it's a good deal we've got with them. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, best of luck for the, for the rest of the tour and best of luck for the album which is released tomorrow. Um, we're going to leave you two Pigeon Detectives to introduce the next song. Yeah.
this next song is uh, in the dance floor hit get my words out and it's I Won't Come Back off the album we might see by the Pigeon Detectives myself Ryan and Matt I've enjoyed your company enjoy the song goodbye do you go full time FM with one? Do you want me to do, do the other lad's signatures as well? <laughs> my art. Yeah, do it, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've got a bit of a fundraising month ahead of us. That's some good stuff, donated David Day tickets. Yeah, that's alright, innit? There you go. Slashes, slashes from Stoke, he's a yeah. size CD. Has he? Yeah. Oh, nice one. He was based in the States, so what? There's yeah. no chance of getting him down. Well, he just bought yeah. it stuff, well, and then he's yeah. like... It was raised and stuff until he was five, but... Yeah, trouble. Yeah, see you later, guys. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Cheers. See you next time. Cheers. Cheers.